So Richard says, how would you approach ranking for local lo for location service keywords? Example, SEO services in city where big sites like Clutch.co and Yelp are dominating the first three spots in the SERP. I have made way better content than them and have internal links from relevant content, strong backlinks, and a decent overall domain with some age and links along with a shield and press release, but I can't get past these three monster sites. Um, yeah, I mean, it's tough. Some, some You can do it. You'll, you, should, you will be able to do it. Um, this is pretty much primarily what I've been teaching in the mastermind lately was, is, you know, backlinks, backlinks are valuable, but only if they're really top of like what I'm finding. Okay. And I got to preface that every time, because otherwise I say stuff, people run off and say, well, Bradley said this. No, what I'm saying is what I'm finding in my testing and in my, you know, test with a bunch of different locations. Now they're all local projects and I'm managing God between my own clients and my uh, link building clients. Now that are mastermind members, I've got, I don't know, 40 some locations. It's insane. And all different industries. And what I'm finding by analyzing backlink profiles, and I'm talking, you know, we do map stuff too, but specifically organic rankings, um, looking at backlink profiles from multiple different industries that it's generally the, the, back, the, the uh, websites, the local business types of sites that are outranking the directory sites. Directory sites are generally ranked on internal links alone on authority. And I don't mean Moz domain authority. I mean, the authority of the entity and the brand itself and then internal links. Cause if you do searches, I, I, you know, if you do backlink analysis, for example, on, on even clutch, for example, a lot of the times you'll see like Yelp and Angie's list and my, my industry, home advisor, lawn starter, like a lot of those types of directory sites, the ranking page for keyword plus city generally has zero backlinks or less than 10 backlinks. No kidding. Um, so, and most of the time, you know, like I said, it's zero backlinks or within five backlinks. So I can count them on one hand. So how are they ranking? Well, they're ranking because number one, the pages are like, you know, thousands and thousands of words that are keyword repetitive words, because like, again, in my industry, but I'm seeing this across all different industries now, because I'm, you know, doing so much link building for so many different, um, uh, industries, but using mine as a, as a specific example, like Yelp, for example, if it lists, if it ranks for tree service plus city, it's because there are, you know, hundreds or dozens and dozens and dozens, but generally hundreds of tree service companies. And so you got to think that net name tree service, that keyword is repeated over and over and over and over again, because it's just a directory listings of all these different tree service companies. So it's like keyword spamming or stuffing, right? But there's thousands and thousands of word of content. So like if you're doing uh, like using Surfer SEO, for example, and you go analyze the SERP results, you'll see that, you know, the local business websites might average 850 words, but the directory sites are averaging 3,500 words and it's keyword repetition over and over and over and over again, because it's most tree service contractors have tree service or tree removal, which is it's synonymous with tree service. Uh, in or tree care, like all those different terms that are basically synonymous with tree service in the, the name of their business. So it's like keyword spam and everything else. So my point is they have authority for the entity or the brand. The site itself is authoritative. There's a, a lot of internal link juice that's flowing in. And when you're looking at backlink analytics tools, they're only looking at external links, not internal links. And there's, like I said, the keywords, so there's a lot more, a lot more content. When I say content, it's not optimized content like what we would do, but it's, it's, a lot of words and also the keyword re repetition over and over and over again. So it's hard to rank or to, to compete with that, but it can be done. And the way that I found that it can be done is by having a, a relevant backlink profile. That's what I've been seeing over and over and over again in my testing, again, looking across multiple industries. So how do you do that? It's not just about getting backlinks or backlinks with certain metrics. I've found that that's not really helping that much anymore. Um, at least again, in my testing, I'm not seeing that that's helping all that much anymore. What I'm finding is if you can get backlinks from topically relevant domains or sources, and here's the thing, even, you know, we oftentimes, like if we're going to go buy links from a PBN, for example, a PBN provider, those, those domains are going to have multiple topics on them. So even if you get a link that's in topically relevant content, meaning the article published on that PBN is topically relevant, which it should be or a guest post or a niche edit, but it's on a, a great big general site, general blog type site, even with high metrics, 
the topical relevance isn't really there. It might be an, a contextual link in relevant content, but the source of that content, meaning the domain itself, is likely not going to be specifically relevant to that project, if that makes sense, to its target. And if you can find links or get links, place links on relevant sources, that is working so much better right now. And if you think about it, it's Google's you know, natural language um, uh, NLP, right? That, that algorithm has gotten so much better at understanding um, language and, and you know, language and, and the meaning of content. And so it, if you think about it, it, to me, it seems very logical. If Google wants to combat link spam, then all it has to do is look at the source URL of a link, an inbound link, and say, okay, what is that site about? Top, like, what is the topical relevance of that site? And if it's not topically relevant, then is that link is valuable? Even though the metrics might be great, if it's not coming from a, a topically relevant source, is that link is valuable? Or is a link more valuable that's coming from a domain that so the source is topically relevant to what the target URL is? And even though it might have lower metrics, at least it's on point, right? It's on it's on the same topic. And so again, for, through my own testing, I'm just seeing over and over and over again, if I can find topically relevant sites to get links on or place links on, that, that even if the metrics aren't as high as some of the other sources, I'm getting better results from that with less number of like overall number. And it's not a matter of referring domains or anything like that, like it has been in the past, at least again, with my own testing, it's more about topical relevance. And so... Coming back to your question, Richard, I think for, you know, you, I know for sure that you can outrank those kind of sites if you can get really, really good links from really relevant sources. And when I say really good links, I don't necessarily mean super high metrics. Of course, that helps. But more when I say really good links, I mean from really relevant sources. So um, it can be done. It's just a matter of, you know, how much effort it's going to take, how many of them is it going to take? You know, the way that I'm doing it right now is I'm scraping domains that are, you know, I've gotten doing a lot of that, scraping a lot of domains um, that are, you know, expired domains that can be registered and doing a ton of analysis using Majestic and using topical trust flow metrics. Again, that's just a third party tool. But I found that the topical trust flow metrics are a pretty damn good indicator of topical relevance of the source domains, right, which is where I'm trying to get links from. And so that's where I found the most results right now is doing that. Instead of going out and spending $150 on a guest post or $200 on a guest post, which you can get a relevant link from that because the content is very relevant and it's on usually a general, a high powered site with traffic and everything else, good metrics, but it's usually those sites are going to have all different types of topics on them. And so if you look at the topical trust flow. And again, I know it's a third party metric, but if you look at the topic of tr trust flow from these even guest posts on these, you know, expensive guest post sites, um, I'm finding that the, the relevance isn't there. So yeah, they're, you can, they can still move the needle a bit, but I'm getting better results going out and scraping and finding domains that I can register for 10 or 12 bucks that have maybe five or 10 referring domains, but have the topical trust flow categories in the appropriate category, right? And then find, you know, rebuilding that domain and putting relevant content on it and then linking back to my target assets. And that seems to be working a hell of a lot better. And it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot more work because we got to go hunt those down and then rebuild them and everything else. I've got a whole process that I'm developing still for that. But I'm finding that to be much more effective. Um, and again, it just goes back to what I'm seeing through my testing is topical relevance is really the most important thing about backlink profiles right now. Um, Again, looking at multiple industries, most of the top ranked um, organic sites in the organic section that are outranking like the big directory sites, like what you're mentioning, Richard, are typically if you, if not always, I mean, there's always outliers, there's always anomalies, but generally what I'm seeing, the, 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 mo the majority of those types of sites have very, very specific, you know, topical, rel like their backlink profiles are very specific to the, their own topic. And it's, it's, it's almost you know, probably 60, 70% of the time, that's what I'm seeing. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to model with my link building service. And I'm seeing better and better results that way, the more that I do that. So I know that was a long winded answer, but hopefully that makes sense. You know, you can absolutely outrank, um, I, you know, I've been doing it with tree service contractors for a long time, outranking, um, you know, directory sites like Lawn Starter and all that kind of stuff. So it's a matter of, but I've also been working in the tree service industry for 10 years. So I've gotten a lot of really good sources for links for that kind of stuff. But now that I'm starting to expand, you know, and do a lot of other industries, um, I found the easiest way to get those is just to go out and hunt them down, hunt down domains. 
I've got a whole process I've talked about last uh, last week in the mastermind about how to go out and actually, you know, find what I call crawl targets that are specifically in that topical trust flow category that you need for whatever project it is that you're working on. And I've got kind of a whole process using Majestic um, to analyze and go find these crawl targets. And then I just plug them into a crawl, um, a crawl tool and, you know, let it run for a week or however, you know, however long it takes. And then I go back and look at the inventory, the, um, you know, the return domains that are uh, eligible for registration. And then I go analyze those and determine, are they clean? Do they have a clean backlink profile? Have they been spammed? Are they in the appropriate topical trust flow category that I need, right? Does that, in other words, are they topically relevant? If so, then I can purchase those 10, 12 bucks. I can have some content put up on them that's relevant. Then I can use those to link to my assets. And, uh, you know, I, I send that over to a, um, um, a site builder that I have. He builds the sites on HTML. So they're easy sites. They're not PBNs. I'm, I'm focusing all that topical relevance from that rebuilt domain to one, one asset or one project which typically means I'm going to link to the money site, the Google business website, and the Google map all in the same rebuild. That makes sense. So that was a great question though, but that's, that's, that's my experience with it. And that's what I would suggest to you is to uh, focus more on topical relevance, get links from those sources. Like press releases are good for certain things, but you know, the relevance, again, looking at the backlink profile from press releases, and I use a lot of press releases, it's, you're not going to get topical relevance from that. Like as far as the, the, the source domains aren't going to be topic, unless you're in the news industry, <laughs> you're not going to get, you know what I mean? Like you're not going to get uh, topically relevant source links, you know, links from topically relevant sources, I should say, uh, from press releases, but press releases are good for other things. Like press releases are good for branding, um, for like for brand searches. When you do press releases with, you know, brand and title, um, they'll rank for brand term brand searches, which is good. They're also one of my favorite things to use press releases for right now is running CTR traffic. So click through rate manipulation traffic through press releases, publish a press release, have it linked to your target asset. Or what I prefer to do is have it linked to the Google business assets, like the website or a, a map and then have run click through rate, you know, manipulation, CTR traffic through that for referral traffic from news sources, because you can blast it with referral traffic that way because it makes it look like that press release got picked up and you know got a lot of attention. And that can really have a, a nice effect on moving uh, both maps and organic. It's something that you have to do regularly in order for it to continue to stay, stay ranking. But um, you know, I just, like I said, press releases in, them, in themselves for backlink sources, I, you can't, it's, it, there, if you look at the backlink profiles from the, the press releases, you'll see that they're not, unless you're in the news industry, they're, they're not gonna be, the source is not gonna be topically relevant to the vast majority of projects, if that makes sense. So that's just kind of my own methodology that I've, I've, I've adopted over the last, because of several months of just analyzing many, many projects in many different industries. I've got a lot of data at my fingertips now. And because of that, I'm, I've, I've just, I'm seeing that as what is the most important part of backlinks. Um, so that's what I'm working on. So I'd encourage you to do the same.